it's Stephanie welcome back to my channel so today I am going to do my owls wrap up slash April wrap up for all the books that I've read so total I read 18 books in April and I actually completed all 12 owls so I was very proud of myself um, I will say I didn't really stick to my TBR for the owls. I was very much a mood reader this month, but I made it all work, and that's all that matters. So I'm just going to go down the list of the owls and tell you which books I read that applied to these, and then I'll just talk about the books that I read that weren't for the owls. So let's just jump right in. So the first owl is for ancient runes and for that you had to read a retelling and I read Circe by Madeline Miller I gave this book four out of five stars I really liked it it is basically set during the story of the Odyssey except it's from Circe's point of view and when Odysseus is on her island how she ended up on the island, etc. So my synopsis really sucks, but the book is really good. So I highly recommend it, especially if you enjoy Greek mythology and retellings. This is really good. Madeline Miller's writing style is really pretty without being overly flowery and lyrical. It felt like you were reading an older manuscript, without the heavy language that makes sense so definitely check this one out the next owl was arithmancy and the task was to read a book written by more than one author so for that I read the first novella in the ghosts of the shadow market series by Cassandra Clare and the novella was son of the dawn and this novella series follows the story of brother Zachariah from pretty much every series she has. <laughs> so the Lightwoods are expecting a new recruit or a new shadow hunter at the New York Institute. However, there's some kind of hesitation from the Lightwood children. They're not really sure they want another addition to their family and they're not really sure he's gonna fit in. And then the parents, the Lightwoods, are also kind of distracted because Rafael Santiago, the vampire who you may know from many of her books, um, is second in command to the New York Vampire Clan and he brings them some very bad news that also has to do with the history of Brother Zachariah. So it goes on from there. I gave this novella three out of five stars um, just because it was so short and I'm so used to her books being long. I didn't really get a lot of character and a lot of plot like you normally would. It was still a really good novella. Three stars is not a bad review at all. It just wasn't my favorite out of all the stuff she's written. The next one was Astronomy, and the task is to read a book with star in the title. And for that, I read The Dark Between Stars, which is a poetry collection by Atticus. And I did not enjoy it at all. <laughs> um, it's one of those where it's the minimalistic poetry, where it's one line or two lines on a page, kind of like Amanda Lovelace or, um, oh my god, I can't remember her name, the author of Milk and Honey and the Sun and Her Flowers, which I love those books, by the way. And this one just, I gave it one star, and I don't remember the last time I gave a book one star, but it was really hard to get through. And the format, it was like a poem and then a photo that looked like a stock photo that you could find anywhere online. And the poems felt very cliche and not original and stuff you'd find on, you know, those inspirational 
pictures that you find on Facebook or wherever. So I did not enjoy it at all. I'm kind of regretting buying it and maybe I'm just missing the whole point of his collection. Maybe I am, but it was just not for me. I'm sorry if that's one of your favorite poetry books. I'm glad you enjoy it. I just personally did not like it. The next owl is Care of Magical Creatures, and for that you had to read a book with a land animal on the cover. That I read By a Whisker by Sophie Ryan. This is the second book in the Second Chance Cat Mystery series. And I won't go too much into this because it's the second book in a series, but um, Sarah Grayson and her cat Elvis run a secondhand store in New Harbor, Maine. There's a waterfront development controversy kind of going on, and the owner of the bakery is completely opposed to it. And then one day, Sarah finds the owner of the bakery dead. And she decides to try to find out who committed the murder and why, so that she can get to the bottom of everything. So I gave this one, I believe, four out of five stars. They're just really fun. What? Are you happy now? She's been so whiny. The next prompt was charms and that was age line read an adult work and for that I read curiosity thrilled the cat by Sophie Kelly she that is a pseudonym for Sophie Ryan and Sophie Kelly writes the magical cats mystery series and curiosity thrilled the cat is the first book in that series and it follows library <laughs> No, don't mind me filming. Really, it's okay. Your happiness is all that matters. Um, follows librarian Catherine Paulson, and she has taken a new job at a library, and she has a difficult patron one day, and next thing you know, he turns up dead, and her cats end up getting involved in the middle of it because they have special abilities like becoming invisible or walking through walls and they help her to solve the mystery. So I gave that one three out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. So I'm interested to see how the second book is going to go. Ow! Really? The next owl was Defense Against the Dark Arts and that was based on the spell Reducto, so a title that starts with an R. And for that, I read Red Velvet Revenge, which is the fourth book in the Cupcake Bakery Mystery Series by Jen McKinley. Since it's the fourth book, I really won't go into a synopsis, but it follows um, Mel, Angie, and Tate. They've all been friends for about 20 years, and Mel and Angie decide to open a bakery, Fairy Tale Cupcakes and Tate is their primary backer for the business and while they are running their business they find a body and get involved and try to solve the mystery. <laughs> so there's a little bit more um, tension and storyline in this book so I don't really want to give you a huge synopsis but I gave it three out of five stars. I already have the next one on hold at my library and it's just a really cute fun series. Okay, next is Divination, and for that I had to read a book that was set in the future, and for that I chose Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is set in the year 2575. It follows the story of Katie and Ezra. Two mega corporations are at war for this little planet that really doesn't matter or amount to much, and Katie and Ezra are kind of thrown in the middle of it, and they get caught in an evacuation. On one of the ships that was being evacuated, turns out there is a deadly plague, and it's airborne. So anyone who breathes in the germs or the virus automatically gets affected. The people stuck on that craft are in trouble, and Katie is trying to hack into the systems 
to figure out what's going on, and it turns out her ex-boyfriend, Ezra, may be the person that can help her hack into the systems and find out what's going on. I cannot believe how much I love this. I'm not a sci-fi person, and this is the second sci-fi book that I've read this year that has completely blown me away. So definitely check this out if you haven't read it already. The next owl was for Herbology, and for that I had to read a book with a plant on the cover. And for that I read Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death by M.C. Beaton. Um, this was the Cozy Mystery Book Club Book of the Month for April, and this is my second time reading it. So it follows Agatha Raisin, who is just retired. She was a public relations manager, and she moves to the Cotswolds in England in order to, you know, really get to know her neighbors and get involved in the village. She decides to enter a quiche making contest but she can't cook at all. <laughs> so she buys store-bought quiche, enters it in the contest, and the person who is the judge is found dead the next day, and the only evidence is a slice of her quiche. So she is suspect number one. So she decides to get involved and try to solve the murder to clear her name. And I gave that 3 out of 5 stars. I'm on book 13 in the Agatha Raisin series. They're not my favorite favorite, but they're so fun. And Agatha Raisin is such an unlikable character. She's kind of witchy and extremely assertive, and she can be kind of a bully. But she also has softer moments, and then you kind of learn why she's the way she is, and so you grow to love her. So if you do start this, um, just give it a chance, maybe get to the second book and kind of see how you like it, and I bet you'll enjoy the series. The next exam is History of Magic, and for that I had to read a book that was published at least 10 years ago, and for that I chose one of my favorite poetry collections of all time, and that is Blood Dazzler by Patricia Smith. This was a National Book Award finalist. It was published in 2008, so 11 years ago, and I actually got a chance to meet Patricia Smith and my undergrad. Um, she came for our literary magazine. She was one of the judges, and she wrote some stuff for our magazine, and I got to meet her. So my signed copy is actually at work, and I have a second copy here, and this is st poems in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, and it is so emotional and so good. She personifies Katrina, so she's like a person, and you you get a feeling of like why she wants to cause all this destruction, <laughs> and just poems from people that were left behind, and people like moms who were just stuck on roofs just praying for somebody to come and help and they had to choose between themselves or their children or they're just wading through this dirty water and it also big trigger warning for animals um a lot of people had chose to leave their animals behind the people in this book that did so thought that it wouldn't be that bad when they evacuated so they thought he would be fine I don't know why you would think that, but that's what it is. So the dog's name is Luther. The first time I read this, I read the poems and I sobbed the entire time. And this time around, I knew that it would just really affect me, so I skipped those. It's only like three poems. They are really good. They're really well written, but just keep that in mind. Obviously, I gave this five out of five stars. I've read this. I don't know how many times, and it never gets old, it's just as good every single time, so definitely go check it out. The next is Muggle Studies, and for that I had to read a contemporary, and I chose to read Girls on the Verge by Sharon Briggs Waller. I did not expect to like this book as much as I did. Um, it's really short, 
but despite that, I really got invested in the characters and the plot. It follows teenager Camille, and she gets pregnant. She knows that she doesn't want to keep the baby, she doesn't want to, she doesn't want it to affect her future, and she knows that she just can't provide for her baby at this point in her life and she doesn't want to carry it to term because she doesn't want a baby. So she knows she can't tell her parents and she's afraid to tell some of her friends. So one unlikely friend is very supportive and offers to drive her to the border. So they, she drives her to the border to get a pill that will help in the abortion process and things go from there. And this was just a really necessary book, in my opinion. Um, I know the subject of abortion is uncomfortable, and it brings up a lot of good issues to talk about, like a fetus of life, um, women's right to choose, planned parenthood, what happens at clinics who say that they're, you know, family planning clinics when really what they do is give false facts about abortion and do everything in their power to keep the woman from getting an abortion. And she had to go through a lot of shit just to get factual information and to do what she needed to do. And I cried through a lot of this book because it was so emotional and I couldn't help putting myself in her shoes and thinking what would I do and would I do the same thing, how would I handle it, and it's just such a good book. Even if you're pro-life, I think it's a good book to read just so you can kind of get an idea of what the pro-choice person thinks when they're considering their options. Um, again, obviously 5 out of 5 stars, I'll quit ranting and gushing, but please go check this book out. I highly recommend it. Next is Potions, and for that it says Next Ingredient Read a Sequel, and I finally read Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Butch just bought his frisbee in here. I'm your frisbee, Butch. Hey, buddy. Yeah, is that your favorite toy? And it's your birthday today. Yeah. My baby turned six today. <laughs> anyway, I read Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I will not go into this because it picks up exactly where it left off at the end of Strange the Dreamer, so it would spoil it. But um, I think that you should go into Strange the Dreamer not really knowing that much because the plot is so complex and hard to explain, but it basically follows the story of Laszlo Strange, and he is obsessed with the lost city of Weep, and he is a librarian, so he uses his position to get all this information about Weep, and etc etc and one day he gets a chance to actually go and it proceeds from there and it is beautiful and wonderful obviously it's one of my favorite books <laughs> you can't see my shelf but um second book did not disappoint it had a lot more plot twists in this book and it was a little bit more action-packed and the ending was satisfying so Obviously, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I will be rereading this series, I'm sure, again this year because I love it so much. So definitely, definitely check this out. And last but not least um, was Transfiguration, and that was to read a book with sprayed edges or a red cover. And for that, I read Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is the first book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. This book is kind of hard to explain, so I'm just going to read the synopsis on the back. But it says, um, Errand requiring immediate attention. Come. The note was on vellum, pierced by the talons of the almost crow that delivered it. Keru read the message. He never says please, she sighed, but she gathered up her things. 
When Brimstone Called, She Always Came. In general, Karu has managed to keep her two lives in balance. On the one hand, she's a 17-year-old art student in Prague. On the other, errand girl to a monstrous creature who is the closest thing she has to family. Raised half in our world, half in elsewhere, she has never understood Brimstone's dark work, buying teeth from hunters and murderers, nor how she came into his keeping. She is a secret even to herself, plagued by the sensation that she isn't whole. Now the doors to elsewhere are closing, and Karu must choose between the safety of her human life and the dangers of a war-ravaged world that may hold the answer she had always sought. This book is different than Strange the Dreamer. It's not as lyrical or beautiful, but it is definitely, I think, unique. And I really enjoyed that it was set in Prague. Prague is one of my favorite places in the world, so it was really cool to read a book where I could actually visualize what street she was walking down and the landmarks that she was seeing. And this book, it started off really good and kind of sagged in the middle and then really took off at the end. And I gave this book four out of five stars. I already have the next two books in the trilogy and I am going to read those. So I'm really glad I picked this up. And the rest of the books I read this month, I read Death by the Dozen by Jim McKinley, which is the third book in the Bakery Mystery series. I also read The Future by Neil Hilborn. That's a poetry collection and he wrote Our Numbered Days and The Future is his most recent collection and I highly recommend his work. Um, it's very relatable, very accessible and it reads as poetry and he also performs it as like slam poetry. You can find him on YouTube. The poem The Future is one of my favorite ones of all time, so definitely go check that out. I also did some rereading this month. Um, Tome Topple happened this month, and I didn't like officially participate, but I did complete some tomes this month. So I reread The Diviners by Libba Bray. This was probably my sixth or seventh time reading this. <laughs> so obviously I gave it five out of five stars. It follows uh, six characters, in particular Evie O'Neill in 1920s New York, and they are all diviners, so people with these extra powers like holding an object and being able to see um, scenes from the owner's past, or healing when you touch someone who's injured, that kind of stuff, and all of a sudden murders are occurring and it turns out it may be linked to someone who died 50 years ago and he may have come back from the dead to start an apocalypse. The audiobook is really good. It's just the right amount of spooky and I could not put it down. Even when I know what's going to happen, I still can't put this book down. So highly recommend 5 out of 5 stars. Please go check out the series. I also read the second book, Lair of Dreams. I won't go into this because it is a sequel, so I don't want to spoil anything. I also read Going Going Ganache by Jen McKinley. That is the fifth book in the Cake Bakery Mystery series. Four out of five stars, really good. And finally, I read Dress to Kilt by Hannah Reed. This is set in the Scottish Highlands. It follows Eden Elliott, she's in Scotland, to write a book, and she gets involved in finding a body, and she has to solve the mystery, and also possibly find out about her family's past. So this is the last book in the Scottish Highlands Mystery Series, book number three. I gave this book four out of five stars, highly recommend. So I had a pretty good reading month. I'm so proud of myself for finishing All Twelve Owls. This was my first year participating, and it was so much fun. And also, can I just say, thank you so much to G for organizing all of that. Um, her channel is Book Roast. I'll leave it down below. She did such an incredible job. She did a whole document for wizarding careers, what owls you needed to get it done. She did Twitter sprints wands for people being super active on Twitter and Instagram during this whole readathon. 
and I don't know how she did it, but I cannot thank her enough because this was so much fun. So thank you so much, G, and I am excited to participate in the newts later this year. Also, she did uh, classes on Twitter where you would answer trivia questions and get points for your house. And Ravenclaw won house points for the whole readathon with 2,195 points. Recognize. <laughs> I'm a Ravenclaw, and I have never been happier, so thank you guys. That was my wrap up for the month of April. I know this video is super long. I'm so sorry. I read a lot. But yeah, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I upload new content. See you guys next time. Bye.